Welcome to the Central Valley Regional Center's presentation on HCBS Settings Requirements for Providers. In this segment, we will discuss the federal requirement that focuses on individuals' freedom and support to control their own schedules and activities, as well as their access to food. Let's explore the provider expectations and case examples related to this requirement. Providers must ensure that individuals receive the necessary support to make choices about the kinds of work and activities they prefer. This includes allowing individuals to decide what they want to eat and when, as well as choosing with whom they eat. Additionally, individuals should have access to food and snacks at any time. Let's look at a few case examples to illustrate these expectations. Eric, who lives in a group home, has a part-time job that starts early in the morning a few days a week. Due to his early schedule, he often misses breakfast. Eric also enjoys taking afternoon naps on workdays, sometimes sleeping through dinner. To accommodate his needs, the provider helps Eric set his alarm clock, creates flexible mealtimes, and keeps his favorite midnight snack readily available. Another example is Kia Shah, who lives in a group home and has several medical appointments each week. Kia Shah frequently visits the library and community center. Her staff ensures that transportation is arranged for her and her housemates, allowing them to attend activities that are important to them. The provider holds weekly planning sessions with the group to organize their activities effectively. Lily, on the other hand, enjoys her group home and housemates but finds true joy in volunteering at the local animal shelter. To support Lily's passion, the provider schedules her support staff, Jessica, on the days Lily volunteers. This ensures that she receives the necessary assistance and transportation to the shelter, aligning with her preferences. Now, let's address some frequently asked questions related to the federal requirement. One common question is whether the kitchen needs to be accessible 24 hours a day. The answer is yes. The kitchen is an integral part of an individual's home, and they should have access to it like anyone else. Individuals should be able to get a drink, prepare a snack, or meal whenever they want, with necessary support as outlined in their person-centered service plan. Another question is whether this requirement applies to day providers. The answer is also yes. Although day providers are not expected to serve food around the clock, individuals should have the opportunity to access their own food and choose where and when they eat. It's essential to respect their autonomy and preferences. If an individual makes poor food choices, providers are still required to ensure 24-hour access to food unless there is a documented health or safety risk associated with it. Providers should focus on helping individuals make informed food choices rather than restricting their access. In cases where severe health or safety risks are identified, specific restrictions must be assessed, documented, and reviewed by the CVRC-HCBS Modifications Committee. To support individuals' control over their schedules and activities, providers should involve them in planning their daily activities. Support activities should be flexible and aligned with the individual's preferred schedule. Individuals have the right to refuse to participate in scheduled activities and can request assistance in scheduling appointments or arranging transportation for services in the community. Staffing patterns during peak hours, both during the day and evenings, should support greater flexibility in participating in community events. Providers should have a systematic process for gathering input from individuals on daily schedules and planning activities. They should also educate individuals about various opportunities, helping them determine their interests and make choices about activities. Providers must ensure that individuals have access to food, including meals and snacks. Individuals should have a place to store snacks, such as their bedroom or kitchen if desired. They can purchase their own snacks or food with their money and store them in their bedroom. Additionally, individuals can participate in creating the weekly grocery list, share their preferences, and receive support in making healthy meal choices. Individuals have the right to have a meal at the time and place of their choosing, including in private, without staff assistance based on their individual needs. 
Staff assistance during mealtimes should be provided as documented in the person-centered plan. Individuals can also request alternative meals if desired. Kitchen utensils and appliances should be accessible to individuals, and kitchen cabinets should not be locked. Individuals should have the option to cook their own meals and receive support as needed. Individuals have the right to have visitors at the time of their choosing. Providers should support individuals in facilitating visits from family, friends, or others as desired. It's important to create an inclusive and welcoming environment that respects individuals' relationships and social connections. Let's now discuss some practices to avoid when it comes to the freedom and support of individuals. Providers should refrain from creating a set schedule that applies to all individuals. Activities and schedules should be planned with input from the individuals themselves. Requiring individuals to participate in activities against their will or mandating community outings for all individuals should be avoided. Policies, procedures, and participant handbooks should reflect individuals' freedom and support to control their activities and schedules. Providers should not impose house rules that restrict individuals' access to food. For example, mandating that all food must be stored in one area of the house or prohibiting eating food in bedrooms. Meals should not be served at set times without flexibility to accommodate variations in schedules. Restricting an individual's access to food based solely on their weight or personal beliefs about food is not appropriate. Instead, the focus should be on helping individuals make informed food choices. Remember, the HCBS support team is here to assist you with any questions or concerns regarding the HCBS settings requirements. You can reach us at hcbs at cvrc.org. Additionally, your facility liaison and the individual service coordinator are available to provide guidance and support. Thank you for your commitment to promoting individuals' freedom, support, and access to food within the Central Valley Regional Center. Thank you for watching this presentation on HCBS settings requirements. Stay tuned for more informative videos to support your role as a provider at Central Valley Regional Center.